Visit sayarite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to make the quick and easy box cushion. This cushion has seamed corners and a fabric backing with a zipper on the back side. We have a separate video which highlights seven different techniques to make a cushion. It should help you make an educated decision on which approach works best for your desired results. Click the link in the upper right hand corner or in the description below to watch. The quick and easy box cushion with fabric backing may be the easiest cushion making technique that we know of. These bullet points highlight the most important features of this cushion type. The Sayrite fabric calculator for the quick and easy cushion only gives you the ability to make a square or rectangular shaped cushion like we're going to show in this video. However, you can make an irregularly shaped cushion using similar approaches as the quick and easy cushion, but you just have to pattern. We have an excellent video showing how to do that for irregularly shaped cushions like this. Click the link at the top right or in the description below to see that video. The first step in making the quick and easy box cushion is to use the calculator and cut the fabric to size. The first thing you need to do is take your desired finish sizes and put it in the Sayrat fabric calculator for the quick and easy cushion. You can find this calculator at the Sayrite website. Click on Cushions, then select Quick and Easy Box Cushions. Enter your measurements and click on Calculate. The next screen will show the key dimensions for your particular size cushion, including the cut size of fabric that is required. I've already done that, and I need to cut a top plate, according to the fabric calculator, that is 25 inches wide by 25 inches long. We're using a striped fabric, and this is a square cushion, but if it weren't a square cushion, I would want the stripes to be running along this edge, and this would be the front edge of the cushion. For us, it's 25 by 25. So I'm gonna set my tape measure to 25, so right there is centered. So I'm gonna take a pencil, and I'm gonna mark the fabric at 25 by 25. I'm using a scryball pencil here because I have to mark in the colored uh, portion of this fabric and this one shows up pretty well. Next we'll take our decorative fabric and cut corner notches using the Sayrite fabric calculator. The top plate size is marked on our fabric. Now we need to concentrate on the corner notches and according to the calculator for our cushion they're 2.75 inches. So we're going to do that next. So I'm using the clear acrylic ruler on the mark here and the mark here, and this creates, I gotta keep make sure the fabric stays down, a 2.75 inch corner cutout. And we're gonna do that at all four corners. I'm gonna stick the tempered cutting glass underneath, and we're gonna cut this with a hot knife. Now, it doesn't have to be cut with a hot knife. You could actually use shears or pinking shears, but this just prevents the edges from unraveling. We're using a 100% solution dyed acrylic fabric called Outdura. Phenomenal upholstery fabric that is reasonably priced and it's extremely UV fade and stain resistant. And you can see this seals the edge of our fabric. We're going to cut these notches out as well. So here's what your corners, all four corners should look like. Uh, just like that. For the bottom plate, we recommend using cushion underlining material, Fifertex Plus, or Textiline. I'm using the uh, clear acrylic ruler and the scryball pencil to mark our underlining material, and I'm going to mark it to the right size. This is a uh, underlining fabric. You can see through it. Uh, it's great for the underside of cushions and doesn't cost much. To determine the appropriate size for your bottom plate, refer to the fabric calculator in the key dimensions here. You can cut this material with scissors, it does not unravel. This is a number five coil zipper and you can see the teeth are on the, this side and there are no teeth on the bottom side. We want to put a quarter inch seam stick for canvas and upholstery down both flanges of the zipper and keep it close to the raw edge. And uh, this is a double sided tape that's an acrylic base, not a rubber base, so it doesn't yellow in the sun. 
This is our bottom plate and I, put, I struck a line in the center. Uh, the zipper is going to be slightly off center because I'm going to use that line to, as a guide for my zipper. But if this were not a square piece and this were rectangular and it was longer this way, the zipper should go on the long side of the rectangle, not the short because that makes it easier to insert the foam. Peel off the transfer paper and the teeth should face down against the uh, cushion underlining material. You could use uh, the decorative fabric as well rather and if, 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 if you didn't want to use the cushion underlying material that's your choice. We're going to put it on so that there's a little bit of excess over here and over here. Now we're going to sew it. We're going to set our stitch length to about four or five millimeters in length. I'm going to set the reverse in that as well and then I'm going to move my needle to the right so I get closer to the zipper's teeth with this stitch and we're going to sew with it on the right side, the teeth on the right side of the presser foot and we'll just lower the foot. We want to do a little bit of reversing here. Sorry my hands are in the way. So right there at the beginning and we'll sew down this side and do reversing at the other side and then we'll flip it around and sew on the exact same side for this side as well. So once we're done down here, I just flip it over here so the zipper's still on the same side of the presser foot and I repeat the process. Okay, so now we're going to take our scissors and we're going to slit. You can see the two seams here to open this up for the zipper and we're just going to slit it all the way across, being careful to keep it in the middle. To put the slider on, we're just going to break the uh, teeth apart by an inch or so. Oops, there, I got a thread I got to cut. And then we take the slider and position it so that it's even with both so sides, like that. And then I usually take this finger and I push until it pops, like that. Now it, it slides on. And I'm going to leave the slider in the middle position right there. Now we'll go back to our decorative fabric and sew the corner notches together. Going back to the top plate, this Outdura 100% solution dyed acrylic upholstery fabric does not have a right side or a wrong side. Some of them do. Uh, we're going to call this the right side. We're going to take double sided tape and we're going to put it along one side of each one of the cutouts. Doesn't matter the, the side that you select and we're going to do that at all four corners. Now we're going to peel off the transfer paper revealing the glue like that and this is the fun part. This is the outside surface. The outside surfaces face each other and all you have to do is fold it over and baste it in place. Now you could use pins if you didn't have the basting tape but boy the basting tape sure makes it nice. We're going to do this to all four corners. If you've done it right this is what it should look like. This is the outside surface. Let's take it to the machine. We're going to put the magnetic guide at a half inch on our needle plate. This is the ultra feed sewing machine. We're going to move our needle to the center position because we want to sew a half inch seam allowance. And for each one of the corners, all we're going to do is sew a half inch um, up that side, doing reversing at the bottom here and when we reach the top. Keep it up against the magnetic guide so your seam is a half inch and it's okay even if you sew off of that corner a little bit. Just make sure that you do enough reversing to hold it well. And we're going to do that to all four corners in the same manner. Your next task to sew the assemblies together, the top plate to the bottom plate. First we're going to cut off the excess zipper here on both sides. Then we're going to take double sided tape and we are going to baste it around the perimeter of the plate and this is the outside surface. The polar is up. So make sure you put it on the outside surface. So we're going to do this to all four sides. We're peeled off the transfer paper. I'm just going to start with two sides. Now the zipper usually goes from left to right on the foam so my stripe's going to go this way if you have stripes. So let's see. And then we want outside surfaces to face each other which means the seam's going to be out like you can see here. And I'm going to position this so you can see it. This will hang over the edge slightly. So right like that. And we're going to base to this side without stretching and making sure the edges are lined up nicely. And if it's off, when we reach this corner, if it's not equally spaced, we can rebaste it again. But look at that. It looks like it's perfectly spaced evenly. So that's good. 
And uh, let's go ahead and baste this side down in the same manner. Um, I'm just going to move the fabric over to there and uh, follow this all the way around the perimeter. So we're showing one more corner. See how the fabric's off a little bit? You need to make sure that it's off uh, consistently because if it isn't, then your corners may be um, slightly off. See, oh, actually this one's actually good. So, but you can actually stretch or shrink a fabric a little bit as long as you don't introduce too many wrinkles. So we are basted around the perimeter. Oops, this one came up a little bit. We're ready to take it to the machine and sew. I'm gonna set up my stitch so that it's 3 8 inch and I'm just using a, got, a measuring device here. I'm putting it on the needle. So there, my magnetic guide is at 3 8 of an inch. That's perfect. Doesn't matter where you start sewing, I'm just gonna start randomly here. I'm not gonna do any reversing because I'll actually do reverse, or I'll actually just sew over these stitches and reverse a little bit when we come back around. So we're gonna keep it up against the magnetic guide, 3 8 inch stitch allowance. When we get to a corner, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that this fabric is not gonna be sewed in, by, so I just basically create a little pucker like this. That way I know I'm not sewing through it. Let's do that, there we go. And I will sew all the way to that stitch. So I'm gonna sew a little bit on the slow, right there. So I'm right before I reach that stick. Uh, stitch. I lift my foot, I leave the needle buried in the fabric, then I pivot my material around, I push this fabric back, and then uh, make sure that I'm not sewing any excess fabric. I lower my foot, don't forget to do that, otherwise you'll have problems, and I sew down this side. So we're gonna do this all around the perimeter, and when we get to our beginning stitches, we'll just sew over them by about an inch or two and do a little bit of reversing. So here's our zipper. And if you'd like, um, you can actually, I can feel the zipper, do one uh, row of stitches back over top of the zipper. So basically the three stitches over the top of the end of the zipper to secure it well, that's not a bad idea. Cutting the cushion foam to size is next. Typically, the foam is cut a half inch larger than the desired finish size on both dimensions. You can refer to the fabric calculator to see the cut size of the foam that's required for your cushion. I've marked my foam to size with a permanent marker and you can use an electric kitchen knife that you use to carve a turkey for Thanksgiving or you can use a serrate blade foam saw which makes almost a perfectly vertical cut. We'll start with show, demonstrating the serrate blade foam saw. For this approach, what I do is I usually use the edge of a sacrificial table so I can hold my blade straight and I line the line up with the table and put a weight on top. So as you can see, this method works as well. Next comes the job of inserting the foam in the cushion cover. We're also going to have a short discussion about the types of foam that you can buy. Our cover is complete. Now all we need to do is put our uh, finger in front of the slider and open it up like that and then pull the slider back and turn it right side out and push all the corners out. So let's do that and then I'll show you what's next. This is our foam. To get it inside you can either use silk film and you can um, compress it with the silk film but we're just going to put it in uh, manually. I'm going to probably show this in uh, triple time because it does take some time to get it inside the cover. While we're stuffing the foam in the cushion cover, let's talk about foam. We're using Cushion Right Premium Foam. It is a high density foam which means you can use it heavily and it will last for years without bottoming out. If you plan on using your cushion occasionally, consider Cushion Right Standard Foam. It is a medium density foam. In short, if the foam is used heavily, the higher the density, the longer the life of the foam, while indentation force deflection, or IFD, has to do with how soft or firm the foam is when sat upon. Okay, once it's in the general position, and we probably still have some moving to do, uh, we're going to close it up, and you still want to uh, work with the uh, cover to get it in the optimal position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and, and it, we designed it so that the fabric would wrap to the back side a little bit so we wouldn't see the bottom 
um, cushion underlying material. So the seam won't fall right on the corner. It'll wrap around to the back side a little bit. Um, but there we go. This corner still has a little bit of work to do, but you just massage the foam into the appropriate spot and then your cushion cover is complete. Coming up next is the materials and tools list that we use to make this quick and easy cushion. For our decorative fabric, we chose Outdura upholstery fabric. It's 100% cushion dyed acrylic, great for indoor and outdoor use. Available at Sailrite. This video is part of a set of six tutorials showing different techniques to sew cushions. Click on the playlist to see others. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new tutorial videos when they become available. I'm Eric Grant. Thanks for watching.